Welcome to another episode of The Lacquer Podcast. And this time around, I have no finished objects. What? I have four whips to show you today. Three crochet, one knit. And I have a gift that somebody, that gift that somebody gifted me. And I have one gift to announce the winner for. So it's going to be interesting. My name is Yaline and I'm staying in Bloemfontein, South Africa. It is summer year. It's hot. I have the aircon on and I am so excited to show you all the whip things. I would say it's an advent episode or what did I do with my advents or what am I busy making with my advents. I'm going to show you my scrappy flower motive blanket and then two patterns I'm busy designing. Yes, quite interesting. All right, so let's start with, I think, my scrappy flower motive project. This project, I started this project, I think, in 2022 memory might I might be wrong but I absolutely love this what I do is here it is in its full glory here's the front let me show it like this so what I have is uh, it's a is it a hexagon six corners right yes and um, here's the middle of the where I started when I started this flower motif. This will become a blanket one day. <laughs> it's not there yet. But anyway, so I mark the six corners with my plastic stitch markers. And then when I work on a project, this is mainly merino, cottons and things like that. I only crochet one of these hexagon flower motifs into this um, blanket and I have already, so I'm up to date with this blanket or with this scrappy project. You will see on this side from here all the way down here to there is my Miss Lamotte advent and if you've missed me opening up my advents you can go and have a look at my Vlogmas. Um, series for 2023 so yeah the Mot yarn advent is already in here as well as my friend advent where is it now where does it start I can't remember is it this side no 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 it starts here all the way down here all the way down here to up until this green block here so that is worked in as well as my S3 Zoyon Creations Advent. So all the way down here, up to there, and here. So me and this blanket had a little bit of a crisis. It was about, when was it? I think in September month or August, I realized that one of the blocks I crocheted was indeed not a hexagon, it was a heptagon. That's seven corners, right? Where it now starts a new set of wing out. And I couldn't understand why my blanket was not properly flat on the floor and it had like a bit of a bump. And then I realized the one, luckily it was, I catched it, very quickly and I realized about one two rows in there was one of the supposed to be hexagons that was a heptagon so I had to cut and do surgery on this blanket I will put in some photos of how that transpired it was stressful but I did it um, the one thing I can I'd give you advice on is don't be as scared and just go for it when you want to do and correct certain things but yes, I did it and now it's a proper hexagon. So I'm trying to fill, I'm properly, I'm trying to go, you know, in a line. But with the advents, I wanted to keep them all like together. So I started in different corners. So to make sure that I keep the 
advanced colors together. So now we'll just fill the gaps. So this is a flower motif pattern I got on Yarn's website, but Yarn website is not active anymore. I don't know where you can get the pattern anymore, but it's a lovely, lovely pattern. And this is going to take me a very long time, a long time to, to complete. So yeah, love, love this project. That is my first project, my first work. <laughs> my second project I'm going to show you is one of my pattern designs. Um, and for this pattern design, I am using all my scraps, my scraps, my leftovers and mini skeins. I'm also using some mini skeins and I'm going to put on photos of how I decided on my colors for, well, I'm using all the colors, but I wanted to have highly saturated colors and light saturated colors so i had all my yarn together took photos took out the highly saturated yarns to one side all the light colored saturated or yeah not as saturated colors to the other side and then according to that um put them into a color flow if i can say it like that right pinks to reds to oranges, to greens, to blue, you know, that type of, like a rainbow color. And then I put them all on a string. So this I started, I think in August or September already. It might be October. I think it was in October. And I have threaded those two batches of yarns and balls of yarns into a string. So to keep to, so to, to be able to keep the order of the yarns. So I'm going to put all the photos on the screen because I think you will understand it much better when I, <laughs> when you, when you see that actually in front of, you know, like to be able to understand what I'm saying. Well, I'm a visual person, so I like it when people are using visuals <laughs> anyway. And then, so it was a lot of yarn. I think in total, it's almost between one a thousand grams or two thousand grams of yarn if memory serves me well i really cannot remember now i might be wrong and so i'm going to show you some of the yarns that is left over that still need to be winded up these yarns will be the ones that i'm dealing with the last you can see this is my very saturated yarns and this is my light colors and I am already, let me take this out. So I'm going to show you how far I am with, with my wrap. It's a wrap that I'm designing. Ooh la la, what is happening? So I'm keeping it on a string like this so that I'm able to manage the next color what color do i need to use next so that is what i do and when my yarn is done or well i started winding these colors together each so a ball for my very saturated colors and a yarn ball or not a ball a cake rather for my light colors so this is an example of my saturated ball of colors so I wind this all together and I'm very excited to start using this. I'm almost done with the saturated yarns in here. Here is, for instance, a ball of my light colors. And this will become a scrappy wrap pattern. I don't know what it, do you have any ideas of what I can call this, this pattern? So this is the design I'm currently busy with. it has all the colors it's meant for any any uh, well this is a fingering weight yarn but i'll probably also do calculations and um yeah another yarn for or you, another pattern like this for dk yarn and so then both options will be available hopefully in the pattern but yeah this is the pattern that i am currently busy with i don't know when this will be coming out it will be a while, 
because I think I'm always almost halfway now with the wrap. So it's meant to be scraps, use all the colors you want. You can use one base color with all the different colors as your B color. Um, you can play with this. This is, this is meant to be having fun with colors and make a nice meditative patterned shawl. So the stitch is not difficult and I love it. I really love it. So that's my second crochet project. I am beefing up my crochet projects, it's the projects it seems. All right, so let me put this away. Now I'm really, really excited to show you my third crochet project. This is my advent project. And I already started with a scrappy toba box to crochet granny squares. I used the whole mini granny squares. So I remember for the 50, I had a 15 gram um, scrappy toba from Naughty Habit set. And for the 15 grams, where I did do five rows of granny squares, I could, I could get out three granny squares per color. And when I was busy, um, crocheting the, using the advents from Miss Lamot yarns as well as Estreza yarn creations for the 20 grams and Miss Lamot has a range of 20 to 25 grams I could get out four grams uh, four granny squares of my advents and then I also had the friend advent set as well so I had multiple or ample yarn to work with and just crochet granny squares and let me tell you, I really, for December month, having Advent, and just wanted to wind down, Granny Squares was the best, best project to be having so much fun, not a lot of mind power to be able to do something, and just mindless crocheting. It was really wonderful. I loved crocheting the squares. So I made sure by the end of December, or actually even on the 25th of December, when I was done with the advents, that all my yarn blocks, all my granny squares, the ends were worked away. It was, I was really good and disciplined with that. So every day I crocheted my four blocks, four for Miss Lamotte, four for Estrie's Yarn Creations, and then depending on what was the day of the yarn advent, for my friends, if it was there, there was a yarn as well, I would crochet that and sometimes carry it over for the day so that there was no yarns in the yarn advent or the friend advent calendar. So I took all those squares and I knew what I wanted to make with it. I, I had a plan since October for my granny squares and are you ready to see my plan? It's not done yet, it's a work in progress. So if you have any comments or ideas, please shoot it my way. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see where is all the sides, all the all the sides. So I am going to make a granny square coat, a cardigan coat. That's what I'm going to make. I'm so excited because I am already loving it. I am already loving it. So I crocheted the back of the sh um, the the coat using the Crochet as you go method from, is it hooked by Robin? If I'm not correct, I'll correct myself on, on the screen. I'm using a knotty habit. And remember I told you I bought four skeins of these battleship color. <laughs> remember this? This is the reason why I bought it. I am crocheting all my squares together with this battleship dark gray color from Naughty Habit. It is a fingering three ply superwash, 75% merino and 25% nylon. There's 366 meters for a hundred gram of yarn. And that is what I'm using. So it's quite long. Um, if memory serves me well, I have six blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six blocks across and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine rows going down. And it's almost 
almost past my knee. I am short, if you didn't know. I am not tall, unfortunately. <laughs> I would love to be tall. Anywho, um, yes. And what I did was when I was done with the panel, I went to wash it, block it, not wash it, like, yeah, wash and block it, put it on my blocking mat and I made sure and I, I could already um, know that a block, a granny square block, plus the joining granny sides would be about 10 by 10 centimeters. I knew that for a block. So I could, with that knowledge, before I started, I knew with my measurements how many blocks I would use for my size of body or how I would like to have it done. And then I crocheted or I joined the rest of the, the side. So the two front side panels I left at the top side. It's also nine down and three across, right? And then two panels of these, but I have not joined one block for either side of my coat so let me put it on and as you can see I've not crocheted them together because I must still figure out all the things I must still figure out my um, my arms yes so I hope you can see it nice and beautiful there's a gap here that I didn't prop uh, properly close when I was journey joining so that's one of things to remind me this stitch marker here so that I must complete that properly but let me tell you I am really proud thus far and this really reminds me of stained glass right so I'm feeling like I'm gonna name this my stained glass crochet granny square coat Yes, so now the next step is to crochet the panels together. I want to have a slit on the sides as well. So I don't have, I want to have a fully down the sides joint. I want to have a small slit on the sides. I think it's going to be just looking more elegant. Or is there a better way to say that? Elegant is probably the best word there. And I'm going to also crochet nice trimmings around the front edges and the edge of the shawl. Ah, not the shawl, the coat. <laughs> and then I need to figure out how I'm going to work the arms and the armholes. So that is my next step. So hopefully by the next episode, I'll be able to tell you how that is going. But yes, this is my advent project and I am absolutely loving it. Loving, loving, loving it. So yeah, let me know what you think. Do you think stained glass is also the feeling that you get? I would love, love to know. But I mean, all the blocks are just absolutely gorgeous. All right. So yes, that is my third project, which I'm very proud of. I cannot wait to wear this during winter time. I'm so excited about this project. All right, the fourth project is also one of my patterns and you will probably not believe it, but it's actually ridiculous. In 2022, I think June, July, somewhere there, I designed a sock pattern and I knitted a a pair of socks with my pattern and I gifted it to one of my friends and the idea was to immediately afterwards do the pattern write up the pattern get it tech edited test it the whole yard, nine yards and so that I could release the pattern and I just never did it <laughs> last year 2023 I wanted to do it before the end of the year but it was not possible it was a little bit busy and I thought, let me not rush things and let's do it properly. So I'm busy. I'm almost done. Almost. I'm at the end of the pattern. It's almost done. And so do you want to see the pattern? My sock pattern, which is almost two years old, <laughs> but has never been released. 
and it will be released this year. That's a promise. I'm working very hard to make sure that all the patterns I have in my head is uh, that I can execute and release it and make it free into the world. Not free, but I mean like free, put it into the world, right? So this is my diamonds in the rough socks. It's a colorwork pattern, colorwork socks with a beautiful yield that I love. It's a top down pattern and the yarn I'm using, oh my goodness, now I probably don't have the tag with me. Do I have the tag with me? It's Estrie's a yarn creations, hold on. There we go. This is the same base. It's S3 is a Yarn Creations Donna base. I love this base. Um, all the bases of this, the Donna base, which is 20% kit mohair, 25% nylon, and 55% superwash wool. It's a four ply sock weight. There is. for a hundred and ten grams 440 meters so this is 110 grams it's, this set was the same and let me tell you the socks I have in my in my closet between just normal 75 25% percent socks versus this base which has mohair in addition as an addition I this is my absolute favorite socks so I vowed to only knit socks for myself with this Donna base. And um, because I really love, the socks is next level with the Donna base, uh, the Moir base. So that is why I knitted this pair with that base. But I'll show you pics of the, uh, the set I have knitted in 2022 as well. Yes, so this is my Diamond in the Rough socks. It will be coming out soon hopefully soon and um yeah so two patterns i'm busy with for myself that i'm designing and then just go i'm just going with the flow with the with the granny square coat and then the flower motif pattern that is that is all the whoops yes alrighty let's talk about gifts and acquisitions I forgot to show one of the acquisitions in my previous episode, which was, I think, episode 36. Is this 37? I don't know. <laughs> we will know when this is, what episode number this is. Anywho, I forgot to show one acquisition. It was the episode I did with Anita. Oh, it was so much fun having her on. It, it's just so much, so much more energy when you're sitting with somebody and you can have almost a conversation. So I really enjoyed recording that episode. It brought me so much joy. And while both my husband and myself was editing this, that episode, I couldn't stop smiling because Anita really is great in front of the camera. She is just a bundle of energy. And it really made me, I had so much joy. It made me warm inside. <laughs> But nevertheless, I forgot to show the one acquisitions, acquisition I got in December month. And the reason I had to obtain this acquisition, this is blocking boards. No, it's not blocking boards. It's blocking wires um, from Tulip. It's a Tulip made, make. I almost thought it started raining, but it didn't. Anywho. I bought this from the Volais. They couriered that to me. I asked, phoned them and asked, do you have blocking wires? I really, really need them because I needed to block. Where is my Minigami shawl? My Minigami shawl, Shetland lace shawl. If you haven't seen it, go watch the previous episode where I show it. But I needed blocking wires to be able to block that shawl. And so I had to get these wires. And let me tell you, I'm impressed. So there is, this is how many meters? This is the short, you get short version and a tall version in the tulip make. And there's eight wires, I think. Let me count, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, yes. So um, I got that. Tulip, short blocking wires. So yeah, I've neglected to say that in the previous episode. So here I go rectifying the, the, the mistake of not showing you that. There we go. And then I saw Jenny in December month. Um, it was, I think, was it before Christmas or after Christmas? I couldn't even remember. Anywho, she came to visit her daughter and we always meet up when she's around from Cape Town. And it was lovely seeing her and her family again. And then she brought me a wonderful gift. So let me show you this beautiful, beautiful yarn. from Luna Fibers. I mean, look at this. So this colorway's name, so there's like yellow, orange, Red, pink, hot pink, purple, blue, navy. Oh, this is gorgeous. This colorway's name is Malibu Sunset. And it's 100% merino. It's the slick sock base, which is 100 grams and then 400 meters. And this is a super wash merino yarn. Oh, Jenny, thank you so very much. Again, it was lovely seeing you and I love this colors. This will be, I think, a beautiful muscle burrow or a beanie or socks. Um, I know Luna Fibers is doing neon yarns really well. And I probably want to do some neons again this year, work with neons. And I'm into the granny squares. And can you just imagine a granny square coat with neons? It, it will be beautiful, right? Or something like that. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But this is absolutely beautiful. So thank you for this. And then she also gave me a glycerin soap bar. It's a rooibos soap bar. Rooibos. The direct translation to English is red bush, but it's a tea, tea bush typically found in South Africa or only found in South Africa. It's very, the health benefits of rooibos is astronomical and it's a lovely tea to drink. And we South Africans love our rooibos and I believe it's being transported, not transported, outsourced, imported, outported, not outported. <laughs> what is the word? It's imported. Anyway, it's going out of our country to other countries because of its health benefits. People are getting to know rooibos these days. All right, so that is the gift and the acquisition. And now we need to talk. Oh, let me put this back in the package. In the plastic to keep the yarn safe and neat and tidy there we go all right now it's time to give away the last gifts from was it episode 34 i think during that episode we had three gifts and since then for each episode i have announced the winner so the winner of this beautiful stitch markers by Anna Gret um, of Pincushion Crafts. I mean, look at that. So that was a, what was that? This is a, is it a ice cream? It looks like an ice cream. It's beautiful. And a cupcake. And another slice of cake and a coffee. 
Oh, this is all beautiful. So the winner will be announced on the screen. I draw the winner a while ago and I hope you got you you will enjoy it. I'm not even hoping. You will enjoy these stitch markers. Please send me an email at sales at madepayaline.com with your details. So your contact details, your cell phone number, your postal address, so that I can send these off to you. Congratulations and have a great time using these stitch markers on your projects. And thank you so much to Pincushion Crafts for sponsoring this gift. It's so is appreciated. All right, I quickly want to talk about my goals for 2024. I have, I think, three goals. Yes. The first one is I really want to spin more yarn. I've been really bad doing that in 2023. And that is, have to stop. Because I really love spinning yarn. And so I have to make an effort to do that much more this year. The second goal I have is to do a stick project. I already have a plan in mind. I'm going to do a small stick project, but I want to do sticking. And that is my second goal for 2024. And then my third goal is to do a cable pullover. A cabled knitted pullover. So that is my three goals for 2024. You'll see that more or you'll see those being done in 2024 and me spinning more yarn in 2024 and yeah i'm excited i'm really really excited for for 2024 it's going to be an awesome year for crafting i'm excited about my projects i'm ex i'm actually astonished that i have four projects okay well wait 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 let's stop there the one is really not a project. It's just for leftover yarns, my flower motif. But basically, I am more working currently on my knitted socks, my knitting socks, my pattern, as well as my granny square coat. My other pattern is a little bit on hiatus until I'm done with my sock pattern. So yeah, that is the truth. So I'm actually having current two whips that is really on the go currently. But it's four whips in total and i don't wanted to show you my scrappy flower motif blankets so that is all the information everything for this episode please let me know what you think of all my projects do you have ideas for me that i must embark on and projects that i must embark on for 2024 what is the projects that you have what is your goals do you have a specific way of knitting or cables or lace work or something that you want to challenge yourself with this, with 2024 i would love to know and yes that is all from me stay blessed until i see you next time bye Welcome to another week.